You may now take your seat. Thank you very much. Dignitaries, guests, academicians, fellows in the government service, civil society and development partners, cultural workers and artists, and university, university students. Salamu pagi sa mga, asalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, maayong punta, and a vibrant morning to one and all. ASEAN has come a long way from its beginning in the latter 1960s. Now, ASEAN has grown into a vibrant and increasingly integrated economic region, an increasingly stronger social cultural community, and a significant force in international diplomacy especially in the East ASEAN region. On the occasion of the 50th anniversary of ASEAN, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, the Mindanao Development Authority, the ASEAN Society, and the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN in East Asia, with the support of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Philippine Mission to ASEAN, are co-hosting today's public symposium on building ASEAN social cultural community and nation building. To officially start today's affair, let us listen to the opening remarks of the President of Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia, Professor Hidikoshi Nishimura. Sino daw mag-introduce ni President, ni former President? Dapat someone. Thank you. 
ASCC agenda. As the relevant organizations who support this plan of action, it is willing to commit to the ASCC agenda in the future. In their career, completion of ASCC group in the future. And here in Dubai, social cultural issues remain. Environment, health, poverty, and disaster management. Today, the symposium will be a good starting point to receive these difficult issues from Mindanao's past. As a contribution to the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ASEAN, area in cooperation with the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs and the Philippine Permanent Mission Class, as much older, published the five volume books, ASEAN at 50, Retrospectives and Perspectives on the Making Substance Significance and Future of ASEAN. Volume 2 and 4, which are related to today's symposium, are already available in the website www.area.com. I would like to introduce the important survey results in Volume 2, Voice of ASEAN. What does ASEAN mean? ASEAN. Area conducted a survey in awareness of ASEAN people living in ASEAN. The results show that over 80% of those surveyed in each country were at least somewhat familiar with us. Comparing this finding to easier parts in 2007 to 2004, the number of those familiar with us increased from 56% to 81%. Given the wide media coverage of the ASEAN government in 2005, this is understandable. People's sense of belief what strength and the expect, expectation of ASEAN community will be in place. Before concluding my remarks, I would like to cite Prime Minister Abbas's opinion in his paper in Volume 4. The most important aspects of ACC are the goals of participation or engagement and the creation of ASEAN identity. Political leaders must take on their responsibilities to move things the peoples of ASEAN will create our identity and value that will steer ASEAN into the future. Again, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Philippine Institute of Development Studies or Development Studies and Mindanao Development Authority and ASEAN Society for hosting this event with Asia. I would like to thank you for joining us today in the symposium as a way of celebrating us at the 50th anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, President Ishimura. May we also request the Executive Director of the Office of ASEAN Affairs of the Department of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Rizaldi Pachon, for his opening message, sir. Excellency Gloria Mohapagal Arroyo, Congresswoman and former President of the Republic of the Philippines, Mayor Rosario Miguel Carpio, ASEAN Deputy Secretary General for ASCC, Bongtep Artakay Bay Walbarki, Secretary Datu Abul Kayak Nonto of the Mindanao Development Authority, Civil Service Commission Chairperson Nelly Shibala, Ambassador Delia Albert, former Secretary of Foreign Affairs and Chairperson of ASEAN Society, Professor Hidetoshi Nishimura, President of Iria, PIDS President Dr. Gilberto Lanto, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mayu Kuntag, it is my distinct honor to be here today in this public symposium focusing on the nation building of the ASEAN social cultural community for the ASCC and the nation building. I see here today a number of established leaders innovative thinkers, trailblazers, community builders, as well as practitioners and students of ASEAN who have contributed one way or another to the continuing evolution and growth of ASEAN. ASCC, which the Philippines championed during the time of President Arroyo, is an important pillar of the ASEAN community along with the ASEAN political security community and the ASEAN economic community. It is the ASCC that gives more focus on the welfare of the people, the protection of the environment, and the importance of having our own ASEAN identity. 
how the building of the ASCC contributes to the nation building of each ASEAN member state and vice versa will be an interesting topic for discussion today. ASEAN has gone a long way. Just a couple of weeks ago, on, on 8 August, we celebrated a momentous occasion, the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. It was an important milestone as ASEAN, originally composed of five member nations, has grown into a strong grouping of 10 member states that have shown fruitful and purposeful cooperation in its five decades of existence through the ASEAN way of consultation and consensus. ASEAN continues to be an outward-looking regional organization that is bent on cultivating further its productive relations with the major and middle powers of the world and other stakeholders in Southeast Asia and the Asia-Pacific region. This year is an exciting year for the Philippines as we chair ASEAN on its golden year. We are now into the eighth month of our chairmanship, guided by the team partnering for change, engaging the world. The Philippines is pushing for advocacies and initiatives that will help realize our six thematic priorities, namely, first, a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, second, peace and stability in the region, third, maritime security and cooperation, fourth, inclusive innovation-led growth, fifth, ASEAN resiliency, and sixth, ASEAN as a model of regionalism and a global player. We have also been undertaking various commemorative activities all year long to highlight ASEAN's 50th anniversary and its significant achievements over the years. I am glad to note that the public symposium we are having today is in support of this objective. So on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs, I would like to congratulate and commend the organizers of this public symposium the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, the Mindanao Development Authority, the ASEAN Society, and the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia. All of you have been active partners of ASEAN in realizing its long-term goals, whether it be in the area of research and policy development studies, ASEAN awareness activities, policy support, and community development projects. You are among our important allies in nation building and in ASEAN community building. I am hopeful that after this event, we will all come out with a deeper understanding and appreciation of the ASCC and with greater resolve to help ASEAN community succeed for the benefit of the peoples of our region. Maraming salamat po, naghang salamat. Pag-uhay kayong lahat, pag-uhay ang Asya. Thank you very much, Director Pastroy. And now, to welcome us all in Davao City, may we have the Mayor of the City, Honorable Sara Duterte Carson. On behalf of the city government, I would like to congratulate the Philippine Institute of, for Development Studies, the Economic Research Institute of ASEAN in East Asia, the Mindanao Development Authority, and the ASEAN Society for this public symposium on building ASEAN social, cultural, community, and nation building in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations this 2017. I would also like to take this opportunity to express my highest commendation to all the speakers, panelists, facilitators, organizers, and guests, distinguished delegates for your cooperation in this symposium. I am confident that all the work put in by each individual for the favorable outcome of this symposium will pay off for ASEAN. With these interactive sessions designed to welcome diverse ideas on community and nation building, may the inputs gathered 
further bolster the ASEAN social cultural community in achieving sustainable solidarity and in appreciating the shared cultural heritage and values among the members of ASEAN. Again, we are humbled that this symposium is conducted in our beloved city, and we are looking forward to a wave of sessions shared with you. It is our fervent desire that you will relish this moment and discover the beauty of Davao City. I wish you all a productive and engaging symposium. And salamat to my good friends. And now to introduce our keynote speaker and guest of honor for today's activity, may we all welcome Ambassador Dahlia Albert, former Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary and Chairperson of the ASEAN Society of the Philippines. Then, when 
Singapore and Malaysia acknowledge the Filipino health workers in their countries who are at the forefront of the battle against SARS. That really dramatized the important role of overseas Filipino workers in the region. Then came the 2003 summit in Bali. The, second, the Bali summit supported the first Bali Concord of 1976 and came out with the Bali Concord Part 2 or Bali Concord the second. The most significant contribution of Bali Concord 2 was to declare that we would establish an ASEAN community by 2020. And in that ASEAN community, that's where the Philippines came in with the initiative. But if you want an ASEAN community, it's not enough to have economic integration. It's not even enough to have security cooperation. In fact, the ASEAN community must be built on a social agenda. Thus, the Bali Concord to provide for a union of caring societies committed to upholding cultural diversity and social harmony. Accordingly, the ASEAN community as embodied in the ASEAN Concord of 2003 was comprised of three pillars. First, political and security cooperation. Second, economic cooperation. And third, the social, social cultural cooperation. In the Philippines, we have three major departments handling each of the areas, each of the communities. The Department of Foreign Affairs takes care of the political security community, the Department of Trade, the economic community, and the Department of Social Welfare Development, the social cultural community. Our incumbent chairman of the Civil Service Commission, Alice Bala, was one of our senior officials for our social cultural community. So, according to the body of the ASEAN Social Culture Community should have a Southeast Asia bonded together as a partnership of caring societies. I will not talk about the context of the declaration because President Shimura already mentioned them. Um, I should just have another bragging right that the Court of Department of Foreign Affairs took a Philippine draft plan for the ASEAN Social Culture Community that was adopted in the Vientiane Summit of 2004 and that had four strategic trusts. First, building in societies to this poverty, equity, and human development. Second, managing the social impacts and economic integration by building a human resource base and systems of social protection. Third, environmental sustainability. And fourth, ASEAN awareness. Came 2007, I chaired ASEAN in January in Cebu. That uh, summit is most remembered for the declaration of pushing forward our plan to integrate ASEAN from 2020 to 2015. But from the point of view of the Philippines, what was very important for us was that because we had been the one who proposed the ASEAN Cultural Community, we also wanted to have a declaration towards one caring and sharing community. And as a Philippine initiative, we also pushed for the Cebu Declaration on the Protection and Promotion of Human Rights. We come a part of, of the rights of migrant workers. So uh, at that time, I explained that we wanted to advance the sense of community and our shared interests to look after each other in terms of social justice, economic development, and common security. There was some resistance to my push for the rights of migrant workers. But you see, the chairman of the summit has the prerogative of the that declaration of the rights of our migrant workers. So, because of that, the leaders directed our officials to implement the declaration, the declaration on the one caring and sharing community, and the declaration on the promotion 
on the rights of uh, migrant workers and to develop effective mechanisms to safeguard our migrant workers, including an asset instrument to protect and promote the rights of migrant workers. By the last year of my presidency on the ASEAN social, social cultural community, 47 multilateral and bilateral agreements have been drawn up. Then in 2009, in the ASEAN summit in Hwangi, Thailand, we came up with the ASEAN social cultural community blueprint for 2009 to 2015. Uh, the blueprint set several key characteristics of the social cultural community, human development, social welfare protection, social justice, environmental sustainability, an asset identity, and narrowing the development gap. Of the three pillars of the ASEAN community, social, social, cultural, political, and security, and economic, the one that covers the widest range is the social cultural community. It covers the whole government from A to Z. A, arts and culture, Z, soul of peace, freedom and neutrality, and asset as far as achieve. And between, you know, public health, like common communities like SARS, and protecting the rights of migrant workers, the Philippine community. We then as a review of the implementation level of 2009 to 2015 grouping, and it said that the grouping has been substantially implemented from 2009 to 2015. And a new blueprint was produced last year for 2015 to 2025. The Elia Singer researchers led by my colleague, Juan Sintal, was my colleague in the Philippine Institute for Development Studies when I was still a professional economist, point out the need that the next blueprint should have a clear framework plus timelines and target outputs for the different projects. And I concur with that proposal. Today is 10 years after my chairmanship, and once again, President Duterte. Uh, is the chairman in behalf of the Philippines. And I'm gratified to learn that under the chairmanship of President Duterte, finally, the instrument to implement the declaration of migrant workers is being finalized. In fact, even as we speak, the senior labor officials are now meeting at the Polar Hotel in Manila to discuss the draft declaration on the implementation and protection and promotion of the rights of migrant workers, hopefully for signature in the November summit. Meanwhile, ASEAN reports that the member states have been implementing the 2007 Cebu Declaration through various joint projects and activities, including the annual ASEAN Forum on Migrant Labor. Looking at what we have done, over the 50 years of ASEAN, we can say that we in ASEAN have expanded our economies. We have grown closer together to trade, diplomacy, and cultural exchange. This unity is endured even if we are a very diverse, multi ethnic, multi religious region at different levels of social and economic development. From the very rich Singapore to the much, much less rich countries in the northern part of the Indo-Chinese Peninsula. It is remarkable that ASEAN unity has grown and deepened despite the temptation to break apart. Instead, we remain on a steady arc of comedy, cooperation, and community. ASEAN's overarching goals, tenets, and initiatives, regional peace and unity, international understanding and mutual respect, open trade and economic dynamism, social welfare and intercultural dialogue, and an ASEAN identity and perspective in dealing with the world. These are not only what ASEAN has sought to achieve for the region's advancement, they are also its singular gifts to the world. I have high hopes 
that these simple shows will be one thought-provoking event for how the class of one day world to provide a singular gift to the world and especially for the ASEAN social culture community to accomplish its goals, especially under the Philippine chairmanship of President Rodrigo Duterte. Dagan salamat na ninyong na. Thank you very much, former President, for that insightful and challenging message for all the participants of this symposium. Indeed, the core of ASEAN are not only the economic integration and security cooperation, but also the social solidarity among ASEAN people. At this point, may we request our um, keynote speaker, as well as members of, of the presidential table for a photo session. So uh, for this time, we're going to have first our members of the presidential table to be followed by the speakers and then the organizers. We will request also um, to be part of the photo session, the the ASEAN Deputy Secretary General for ASCC, Honorable Wong Tep Artakai Balbate. Thank you very much. May we now request the members of the organizing committee from the IDS and Linda.
you very much. And that ends our uh, opening ceremony for this uh, public symposium.